Okay, so first of all, what exactly is an absolute value? An absolute value is simply the positive number of a negative number. So we express this just like this, and these are absolute value signs, and they're treated just like brackets. So the absolute value of negative 4 would be 4, or the absolute value of 4 is also just 4. But what if we have to graph an absolute value? Well, let's start by just graphing the standard equation. Here we know that the line of y equals x is simply a straight line that passes through the coordinates 0 and 0. We'll call this coordinate the invariant point. Now, the invariant point is basically just the x-intercept. Here we have a table of values for the absolute value of y equals x. We can, we can have negative x numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, just like we can have a negative number inside absolute value brackets, but we can't have a negative number, or y equal a negative number, because it's the absolute value of that negative number, which makes it positive in turn. So we take the absolute value of all our negative x numbers, and we flip them to be positive, and we're given this. 2, 1, 0, 1, 2. And you'll notice that the point where these numbers are equal and they start to they come down and they start to go back up, this lowest point is the same as the invariant point or our x intercept. Just like when we go to graph out the absolute value graph, you'll find that the numbers as the numbers approach our invariant point, and then they kind of just flip back up. And here we can just see res the resemblance of our original graph, but we have no negative values. We only have positive y values. We do, however, have negative x values. So just like uh, in years past where you've been asked to express the values of a, your graph in domain and range, we can also express the values of an absolute value graph in piecewise form. And there's two parts to piecewise form. The first part contains all of the positive, right here, all of the positive values of y. So we can write out our equation y equals x if x is larger than or equal to 0. And that will give us all the positive values. The second part is all of the negative values. And we know in an absolute value graph we can't have negative values. So to prevent this, we say that y is equal to negative x if x is less than 0. And this means that, let's say, if, if x is less than 0, we can have a negative 1. Well, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. So these two piecewise expressions make sure that we always have positive y values on our graph and never negative y values. So what if we have to graph the absolute value of a parabola? Well, here I've drawn out the standard equation for this parabola, and this is the graph that we get. But we know that when we graph an absolute value, we can't have any of these negative numbers. So we're going to do this using a couple steps. The first step involves finding the invariant points, or like you may remember from the last slides, the x-intercepts. And with this equation, we just set y to equal 0, and we find that the invariant points are x is equal to 0 and x is equal to negative 2. And so if these are our invariant points, then we know that this is where we have to flip the graph up. But how much do we flip the graph up? Well, this is simple. We just find the vertex, which we find by looking at our p and our q value from vertex form. We just make the, these two numbers the absolute values of themselves. So the absolute value of negative 1 and negative 1 is equal to 1 and 1. And that's where our new vertex point would be. So we flip this up to our new vertex point, the coordinates 1 and 1 and we draw in our slope to the invariant points. And so we're left with a graph that looks like this. And 
I mean, that was pretty easy, right? But piecewise, how we express these graphs, just like domain and range, is a little trickier. You know that there's two parts to piecewise. First, we'll look at all of the originally positive values, which is this part and this part. So we say that y is equal to x plus 1 squared minus 1 if x is larger than or equal to the first invariant point or less than or equal to the lowest invariant point. And this has it so that whenever we have an x value existing in this area or in this area, we're not switching the sign because it's already positive. The second part is where with the negative values of x. So y equals negative x plus 1 squared minus 1. If and this is where we set the domain for our negative values. If x is less than 0 or greater than negative 2. It's easy as that. 